All right, this video is going to show you guys how to rekey your smart key quick set locks or wiser locks um, without the quick set cradle tool. So um, this is kind of handy. I've only seen a few videos on YouTube about this, so I'm going to go for it. So um, in this case, we have a deadbolt cylinder. Um, this is a typical deadbolt cylinder you'll see on any deadbolt. Um, you have your tailpiece on the back here and uh, your deadbolt housing, cylinder, all that. So first off, what you're gonna do, uh, actually before that, this is a um, knob cylinder or it's in your, found in your levers, knobs, and things like that. Basically, they are the exact same thing. I'll show you in a second. So what you're gonna do is grab your pliers and you're gonna remove this clip on the back. Grab some pliers, pull back until that comes out. Um, uh, this housing will now be loose just like the other one shown here it'll just slide right out so you do not have to, to worry about any anything falling out of the cylinder or nothing so set that to the side we'll work on that in a minute um, in this in this scenario I'm actually going to how you to show you how to disassemble this one and then actually take apart this one it's a little a little less worn and easier to work with so um, all right, so moving on here. In this particular cylinder, we have a, uh, a clip. Um, one right, the edges are right there, and right there with an indexing bar in the middle that holds this tailpiece in place. So grab one side of your screwdriver or anything you can, and then put pressure equally on both sides and slide that clip off. Quickset actually does make a tool to uh, pop these off, but I'm just gonna too lazy to grab mine. It's in my truck, so. Um, all right, so once that comes off, there we go, come on right there, there we go. Set that aside, this will come off as well. So you see how this slot right here, whoops. See how it has that slot right there? On this tailpiece, that slot will you can see that it goes either direction with this clip because it has a center piece that goes into this tailpiece like that. It'll go either way. It only goes one way. See that? Typically on these locks, actually all the time, it goes up. So up towards the up part of the cylinder to where your cylinder looks like this. Up that way and up that way. Anyway, so set that to the side, like so, and then you basically just have a spacer. You pop that off, and then uh, again, depending on what key this is set to, um, this whole cylinder will actually slide right off. So be very careful not to let that pop off uh, in any way. So we'll set this to the side for a minute, and then I'll show you this one in particular. Let's set that aside. All right, this next one. This assembly is pretty much the exact same way. Um, you basically have a clip right there. There are the edges with no center bar or indexing bar in the middle. So you basically just pry it off, just like the last one. So there and there. Oops. And then pry that off there. Comes right off. All right, we'll worry about that in a minute here. I'll tell you about that. Okay, so this one does slide off as well. Um, they are keyed to the same key at the moment. So um, things you want to look out for is this sidebar right here. This piece that looks like this. This particular bar will go from one side all the way to the other. And that's the side you want to be worried about. This other side, don't even worry about it. Nothing will fall off there. So as you, oh, another pointer, depending on what your key is set to, these key pins right there will sometimes protrude up and not let the cylinder slide. Basically what you have to do at this point is put pressure right here, hold on the outsides of the cylinder with your fingers, put pressure and then push them down one at a time. And eventually, say there's two here protruding, you'll go click, click as you put pressure here and then it'll slide and then lock up again, click those two will pop pop back up and you push them down and then 
slide it again and then they'll pop back up and then keep going all the way until this part comes off um, so now what you want to be cautious of is this whole half of the lock right here where your pins are on both sides will actually come off so you gotta be very careful not to let that fall off so as you're letting go put pressure on this piece here with your thumb um, remove this off and put it to the side for now all right so now you want to be really careful I mean probably at this point if you're not experienced it may have, parts that may have gone flying already but I'll show you guys how to work with this so um, in this particular case you can remove this sidebar now don't be afraid to remove it it only goes in one way so it's not very hard to put back on so this is what it looks like set that to the side all right so now what you're gonna do is remove this whole side of the lock right here that's gonna come off I like to face it down because the pins will come out with it um, as you can see those will come out grab it and then just wiggle it loose till that happens so all right you can see that there's a spring right here that spring typically won't come out because it's in a notch um, now you can see our wafers let me set these down for you so I'm not wiggling them around all right so sorry there we go so here's our wafers right here which will slide up and down um, with correlation with our key pins here um, there's a little tiny little flange or a little piece that sticks out for these key pins as you can see oh wait sorry can't see what I'm doing okay which move up like that there's a tiny little flange on those things you can barely even see it right there I'll go across all the way let me pull one of these off these are our wafers right here which we, we will be working with so just for demonstration I'll pull one off for you so you can see they're super small just on the tip of my finger you have um, your uh, serrated edges right here which will correlate with your key pins those little pieces right there on, on five of those there's five of these wafers by the way one two three four and five um, those will correlate with your key pins there. This really deep divot right here will control your sidebar over here. So I'll explain how that works in a minute. But basically you want this deep divot right here to be with this divot right here in the cylinder. You see how that goes all the way up and down? So what we're going to do, I'll show you with these ones, we're going to line up these little tiny key wafers with that divot. Well, if you can see what I'm doing here, I hope you can. But you see how those are all lined up now? We'll put one this one in real quick as well while we're here. Like so. Very, very small. Like that. And we'll line them up. Alright, so you see that? Perfectly lined up. In fact, I can stick my pick in there, and they're all sitting just fine. Okay, so um, in this particular deal, what I found easiest to do is actually to grab your keys. doesn't matter what key it is, but as long as it's a quick set key or Sherlock or factory keys of any way um, that fit into your cylinder, and stick it in this piece right here. You'll see those key pins moving up and down. That's perfectly normal. Um, nothing will really fall out. This plastic piece does lift off, so be careful of that and send these pins flying, but just be careful. Um, anyway, so stick that in place. And then what you're gonna do is we have our little divot here lined up in place with our little dish inside our um, our cylinder here. Now we're going to basically put that dish which with our wafers are lined up and stick it right here in this row of our cylinder. And our key pins with our little 
flanges will line up with the ser serrated parts on our um, wafers. So kind of a tricky part here. You gotta be very, very careful. Um, hopefully you have, a, you have a steady hand. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So we will, oh, as a side note, this only goes in one way. <laughs> so you can see, you can see that there is a uh, cutout right here. This cutout is for that spring. So I was actually trying to put it in backwards. That's why I caught myself. So again, making sure all your pins are lined up still, which they are. And we're going to sandwich these things two together. Beautiful. Okay, now that's in place. So at this point, be very careful again not to move that. All right, sidebar time. So now we're going to grab our sidebar. And you can see, like I said, it only goes in one way. It has cutouts for it right there. And right there, two springs, make sure those don't fly out. Um, you have a fat side and a skinny side, like so. Skinny side goes into the lock. And basically, you see how those go in place? Like that, that will just drop right in place. Now at this point, which it is, which is good, it's important that the sidebar is springy. You can see it moving there, back and up and down. That's how it should be on all sides, all the way through. If it's rigid on one side, one of those wafers is off. Okay, so here's what you're gonna do now. Kind of a more tricky part. Again, being very careful not to spill everything, or mess things up. Um, what you're gonna do is grab a flathead of some sorts. Now, I found this to be easier if you stick a key in. Um, if it's there's no key, it's really difficult to find that very, very last notch in that serrated part of those wafers. Um, okay, so what you're going to do is basically pry this like that towards the outer, outer edge. With your key still in, slide it back. What that'll do is just help give you cheap insurance and reassure that those pins are set correctly and that things are not messed up. Again, make sure your sidebar is still springy. Now it's time to put on the housing. So this housing only goes on one way. You can see this notch on the back side. That correlates the back of the lock, almost as similar as with this notch here. Um, but that's the back of the lock. So you can see that also there's a little notch out right here for your sidebar. So simply slide that on like so like that and then at this point I would push pushing here I would remove my key like that grab your clip um, either the deadbolt or this cylinder put it on then check your key that's what I can suggest and it should work perfectly so at that point you successfully have Rekeyed or fixed, I guess, your smart key. Um, uh, as just a side note, as a helpful hint, if this clip is really loose, like this one, you see how it's flopping around? If that ever comes off or works its way off, you're basically going to put your key in. Any locksmith has done this, I bet. And this whole cylinder is going to come sliding out and basically ruin your lock. So, what you're going to do is just cheap insurance. I'll show you. Um, just remove this real quick. It's really loose and floppy. Grab a pair of pliers and then simply just crimp these ends just a tad, just like that. And then grab your cylinder again. I like to put it on the top if possible, like this. As you can see, those will slide in like that those grooves and the clip in place now that thing's not going anywhere so um, that's same especially with these clips when you take these off they tend to bend on one end which if this is loose that whole cylinder like I showed you is going to slide out so anyway um, you successfully rekeyed your lock so if you have struggled with this be patient 
you will get it, I promise you. Um, just make sure that sidebar is springy when all your pins are lined up. Sticking the key in while it's disassembled really helps, I promise you. So um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, again, I usually don't do this on a daily basis. I've got a quick set cradle that I just reset these in three seconds and you know, to for me, time is money. So, but uh, hopefully this helped out somebody uh, who could be in a pinch or wants to try it themselves. Um, anyway, if you uh, like this video, give it a thumbs up as well. Thanks for watching.